Hi, this is George the Tech, and that's John Florian to my right. And uh, <laughs> we are here at uh, VO Atlanta 2022, and we're here to talk with Jonathan from Hindenburg, an interestingly named company for a very helpful, helpful product. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about Hindenburg, the fact that there's more than one flavor, and what flavor is best for our world of audiobooks and voiceover. Okay. I like that you use the word flavor, by the way. Uh, so Hindenburg is a, a, a DAW, a recording program, and it's specifically designed to do a few different things. So one of the, our flavors is uh, specifically designed for podcasting and news productions. Um, the other one is Hindenburg Narrator, and that's um, specifically designed to make audiobooks and for audiobook production. So that's going to be probably the thing that's most useful for your folks. Give us a tour of how Hindenburg works and how it differs from all the other DAWs out there, and I know them all. Give us a little demo. Sure. Uh, so the idea is that Hindenburg is designed with the user in mind first and, and walking through the user's experience in making an audiobook. Why don't I actually just start with a new blank file? We'll just yeah. start there. Um, some parts of recording are, you know, things you, you would have seen before, okay? So, you know, you have like your track information here. Um, but again, the idea that everything is designed to be set it and forget it, make your life easy. You don't have to be an audio engineer. Okay, so if I was doing a basic record and reading from a physical book, maybe I'm doing something like this here and I'm reading and I'm speaking. Okay, so when I stop the record, um, a couple things happen. This region is now selected and then it actually did something called auto leveling, which is where it raises up or lowers the volume so that all your takes match from take to take to take. As soon as you hit stop, it yes. just it goes right into that mode. Yeah, so let's um, it's set up to do it automatically. So let's do another record. Okay, that's a bit of pre-roll that's happening. And then if I'm doing another bit of audio here, it's taking in my voice and it's recording me. And then when I stop, okay, you will see that it raised it up. And so that's it trying to you know match uh, all of your takes together. And it puts your book in an overall kind of good volume. And the whole approach is sort of you don't have to be bogging down with the editing because you're doing it all in the beginning and making the final product as you go along. That's kind of what we traditionally would have called auto punch or punch and yes. roll. Punch and roll, right. So it's a way of doing that, but automating the so, you know, it's recording with pre-roll and all that. But it's a way of doing that with automating the the leveling and the other parts of it. So that's all how you do it. Like if you record a piece and then a piece and a piece. And when you record an audiobook or other audio content, that's what it is. It's really a collection of all your pickups. But things get tricky. And you would notice as an engineer, like if you needed to record this bit here in the middle or something an hour, you know, uh, that you recorded an hour back in the, into the book. Like you got a corrections cue you know, sheet. Corrections. And you knew, you know, you, oh, I got to replace that two word phrase. Exactly. Anytime you have to do a correction, it's a huge pain. So I got into this because I work for the um, Library of Congress, produced this huge amount of books. And the thing would bog us down. We had a 10 year log, a back, 10 year backlog of books. And we eventually got out of it. And this, this feature is a, a big part of why it's because you could put in corrections and not have to deal with the timing of everything okay so I made a little selection here and if I wanted to record and pop something in here I'm gonna right click and I can record this selection or correction right so there's a little bit of pre-roll it's doing its thing and now I'm recording again okay but I've gone over the time so it seems like that's not gonna work but when I stop the recording, it automatically adjusts this and shifts it over to the side. So it just pops it in. So you That's cool. Yeah. I'm not quite aware of anything else that does that. Okay. So that's just like the first bit of stuff. All right. That's all just in like the nitty gritty of recording and punch ins and all that, which is most of it. And that's a lot. But you also can open up the text in the document in, in here. So I'm going to open up this book. All right, and so this is an, um, a book. This one's an EPUB, but you can open up Word documents and other text. And so the text is actually on the screen here when you record. And so what that allows you to do is um, you can sync up the text that's there in the manuscript with the audio that's being recorded. Okay, so if I was narrating this and I was going Bridget Jones's Diary by Helen Fielding, Contents. New Year's resolutions, okay? All of that, um, the text now is synced up 
with that audio. Okay, so anywhere in the book, and you actually can record a book completely out of order if you wanted to. Okay, and it'll all be synced up in the correct order. <laughs> you also can, if you wanted to, not see any of the recording part and just have the text on the screen. And you can you control all this stuff with just the one button. Um, I'm pressing the right arrow key, and every time I do that, it puts in a nav point and goes to the next part of the text and all that. So it's just sort of like sometimes people have this on two screens, and you can do all kinds of stuff with that. What if you realize in the moment, man, I flubbed that line. I need to go back and grab it. You literally just click on the text and go boop and just put it in. Like so that. you click on the text and then just. And then now you're recording. And then you just can keep going kind of anywhere you would like to. Um, and then this structure that's here. So in this book, these months uh, that are here are actually um, chapters. But in another book, it might be something else. Um, and the reason that that structure part matters so much is that when you're going to publish your book out to the world, an audiobook is one big audio file until you break it up. And ACX or other places that you publish, they want it in different uh, you know, sizable chunks because they don't want a five hour long audio file. So when this knows that, oh, I have parts and chapters here, you actually can do that and it'll automatically um, get fixed and go out that way. So it'll divide it it'll into divide the appropriate into chunks automatically. Yes in any chunks and you can customize that however you would like to. There are all kinds of effects that are super cool that I can show you too. Um, I'll, maybe I'll just show you one because I don't know how the audio is gonna work with all that stuff. But um, you can learn a profile, which just means that you can tell Hindenburg, I wanna learn a custom EQ profile. So if you have some nice audio that you did, you would tell it to learn that and you just save it as you know Jim's audio or whatever the case is. And then the next time you open up this voice profiler, you can apply it to a profile and it'll just put it on. And it's just an easy way to have a lot of things in Hindenburg work like just set it up once and that's all you need to do. So it's a, it's a custom EQ yes. based on your own sound that you're like a controlled, like this is the way I sound best. This is yes. my great sound. I would like to make sure that each thing I do matches this sound as much as possible yes. and then it's a, it's a custom eq based on your own voice definitely that's exactly right that's how it works and you can save it and just kind of apply it whenever you want to and then for the editing tools so there's no separate window to to open up like drawing automation or any of that if you want to lower a piece of audio you just grab it and drag it down if you want to do a fade you just grab it and fit, pull it back and then we have these little windows that you can open up that um, allow you to grab clips of audio in and out. And that's especially handy for room tone for any kind of edits that you want to do. And there's so much stuff you can do with this. You can copy a bit of room tone and just make, you can make some huge selection become that little bit of room tone or a tiny thing. You can do all kinds of stuff. Wow. And you all, you can have this up, make it go away, have it come back, all that kind of stuff. Really good for that. And then it's also good, this is, a thing called the clipboard and this allows you same thing you can drag pieces of audio into it and let's say this was like a character voice this is where this is really handy and this is like uh your monster voice right you can reference your monster voice let's say a monster character or something like that comes in chapter one but doesn't come back till chapter six or seven you can always listen to it by pressing this little play bar and then we developed this feature um this is a, a user who had this case where she was recording a kid's book with all these different character voices. She did book number one and she made a bunch of these clips, but then in book number three, some of those characters came back. So what we made, uh, made it so you could do is that you can import audio into the clipboard too, but you actually can import a whole clipboard. You can just select, like, let's say this was that first book that she did and I was on book three. I can then have all those clips just come in here and you can just have them and pull them out into the audio or reference them for anything like proper nouns, character voices, all that stuff. So just a lot of things that are like, you know, um, uh, the narrator's real life, you know, concerns in mind. That's, that's the whole thing. Massive time saving automation things because yeah. audiobook narrators, well, you don't really get paid for the engineering. Do right. you? you need to do it as quickly as you can. Well, let's look at the most, the biggest time saving thing of them all, I think. Uh, so, that has to do with the exporting. Um, so here's this little book, and I want you to see, and you'll see this on the screen capture here. This is the end of my book, but I don't have enough time at the very end. Okay, so we're, 
when you get done a book, you have to send it out to, or most people are going to be sending out to ACX or Find Away Voices, and they're going to publish it and put it on to um, Audible or another place. So they're going to run it through this, it's called a validator. And so it goes through your book and it says, hey, the timings aren't right. The noise floor is too much, the this and the that. And we used to have this validator do that same thing. But now we've gone the next step and we do the same validator that they use. And it actually fixes all of the timings. It fixes the noise floor. It automates the the um, final volume to be the only the thing that you need. So you just don't really have to even worry about it. So if you go down here, I'm going to run this little validator. So again, I don't have enough time at the end of this file. ACX would flag that and say, hey, you need more room tone at the end or in between a chapter or something. So if you look at that file, when I run this validator, it says, but oh, we've corrected the pause, we added some more space, and then it also puts on, um, it puts on the noise reduction, and this audiobook process is um, the leveler, so that's your overall level, your uh, the RMS, so all the technical sides is just done, and you can just focus on reading a book and telling your story. Whoa. That's, that is really quite impressive. Great. So are you guys selling this on subscription model, or can you do a buyout? We both. are both, um, you know, it used to be that you'd buy it outright and we still offer that because some people still like to do that, but you can buy it on a subscription, um, for either a year or month to month. Okay. So here it is for the perpetual it's four ninety nine, but you only buy it once okay. the monthly would be the most expensive. It's $15. And, uh, if you buy it by a year, it's 1250 a month. If anybody looks at the lump price and goes, that's a lot, that's, I mean, you would pay an editor, assistant, ma mastering person right. that to do a book or a lot more, actually. And you would it do pays for books. itself in one book. Right. And you could do everything forever with that. Thanks, Jonathan. It's really cool seeing it work in context and yeah. knowing what I know and what my audience knows in terms of software. There's not really anything out there that does the comprehensive amount of services that this package does. It's, it's really quite remarkable. Yeah, thanks. Um, right. The idea, and we're always trying to you know, improve it and make it better, is to make uh, your, the narrator's life easier and make the whole process done so you can actually get done your books and not just talk about it. Um, and you can use it for all kinds of other things. We didn't even begin to scratch the surface of all the things that it can do. Just take my word for that. Um, but it's also meant to be as easy as pushing a button. And the idea is that if you can edit a Word document and type in there and do that kind of thing, you can probably work this. Where else could they find out more about the product? And do you guys have more demos, things like that online for people to check out? You will be shocked to know that it is on our website, uh, which we recently redid. And um, there are uh, well over a thousand, I think, videos. And you can uh, hopefully find them very easily. There's tutorials and videos. We also do um, free workshops and webinars. And you can find out the dates for all of that on our, um, on our website as well. And you can just come do a workshop, learn firsthand. Um, do a webinar, get an overview, or just watch any of these uh, videos and learn at your own pace. That's fantastic. Most companies don't get the training side of it down very well either. So you guys really a very comprehensive product with training, everything. Really amazing. Well, thank you. I think so, but I'm pretty biased. This has been George the Tech from VO Atlanta 2022. Thanks for listening. Go check out Hindenburg. Bye.